Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to add realistic falling snow to your wintry photos. Before we begin, if you want to know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials, smash that subscribe button and please remember to click that like button which lets YouTube know you like my stuff. Open a wintry photo that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. To ensure that your results will look similar to mine, let's check your photo's size and resolution by going to Image and Image Size. Its size should be somewhere between 1000 to 1500 pixels wide or between 600 to 1000 pixels high. If you're going to change either the width or the height, make sure the chain link icon is active to retain its aspect ratio. Its resolution should be 72 pixels per inch. Click the new layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill it with black, but before we do, Check your foreground and background colors. If they are not black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since our foreground color is black, press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill our empty layer with the foreground color. Go to Filter, Noise, and add Noise. Make the amount 25%, Gaussian, and Monochromatic. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Go to Edit, Transform, and rotate 180 degrees. Click the eyeball icon of the copy to temporarily hide the layer and make layer 1 active. Click the icon at the upper right corner and click Convert to Smart Object. This will allow us to add filters to it non-destructively, meaning that we can adjust them at any time. Go to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. I'll make the angle minus 60 degrees, but feel free to make your snow fall at a different angle. Make the distance 4 pixels. Change the Blend Mode to Screen. Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. It's important to note that adjustment layers affect all the layers below them in the Layers panel. If we want an adjustment layer to affect just the one layer directly below it, we'll need to clip it or restrict it to that layer. To do this, click the Clipping Mask icon or go to Layer and Create Clipping Mask. By dragging the Input Shadows level to the right, we're essentially making less falling snow appear. Conversely, by dragging the Input Highlight slider to the left, we're essentially making more falling snow appear. I'll make its Input Shadow level 30 and its Input Highlight level 176. Let's blur the falling snow slightly. Make Layer 1 active and go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 0.4 pixels. Make the top layer visible and active. We'll increase the size of this layer by pressing Ctrl or Command T to open our Transform tool. At the top, make sure the chain link icon is active between the transform's width and height. This links them together, so no matter what percentage we type into one, will be repeated in the other. In either field, type in 200 and press Enter or Return. Since this layer is now double its original size, it extends way beyond our visible boundaries. We'll crop it off to keep our file size down. To do this, press Ctrl or Command A to select our visible document and go to Image and Crop. Then deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Convert this layer into a smart object and change its blend mode to screen. Go to Filter, Pixelate, and Crystallize. Make the cell size 6. This does three things to our snowflakes. It enlarges them, gives them irregular multifaceted shapes, and varies their translucency. Go back to Filter, Blur, and Motion Blur. Make the distance 10 pixels. 
Click the Adjustment Layer icon and click Levels. Clip it and make the Input Shadow Level 32 and the Input Highlight Level 190. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.